Jeff, is, uh, Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you today with something a little bit different. Jeff has built us some Gorilla Glue slugs made out of Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. Not out of the spray. I put a little Gorilla Glue in my dew this morning. And in fact, you can even brush your teeth with Gorilla Glue. <laughs> but Jeff used some uh, Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks, poured it into a mold, a mold that was made by Sartal. He's contributed quite a bit of things to this channel over the years. And uh, made these Diabolo uh, shaped Gorilla Glue slugs. And then they have a little steel ball in them that's called a, Jeff has a racist Pachinko word. ball. Uh, I'm sorry. A, Pachinko ball. That sounds racist. So I'm just going to go the with Japanese a Japanese will know what that is. A little steel ball. The anime kids. The anime kids. <laughs> I hope they're tuned in. Anyway, we're going to fire these. They're very lightweight rounds. We don't expect a lot of recoil. We don't expect a lot of noise. But I'm going to turn around. We're going to put some uh, some of these rounds against uh, some water jugs and see what they do. So let's give it a try. Eyes, ears, nose, and throat. Nose and throat. <laughs> oh, two out of three. Oh, I shot, <laughs> shot too high on that last one. <laughs> Ballistic watermelon. And these are the high velocity, now with 25% more velocity, right? <laughs> yeah, this one's going about 1650 feet per second. Ooh. 1649. That's a lot of feet. That's a lot of feet. Do you, uh, you want me to hit the nose between the eyes? <laughs> it's right in the center, right, right the there. Center. Whatever's right in the, in the center. When you're, when you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Wow. That's, huh. I didn't think it would blow it apart that no, much. I didn't either. Today, all the tests will be done with a smoothbore shotgun. The Gorilla Glue Slug is not only stable in flight, but also very accurate. And our goal is to achieve both of those things, accuracy and stability, not just put random things in a shotgun and see what happens. Think it's gonna go through? I don't think it will. No, I think it's gonna, I'm just gonna make a divot, but uh, let's see what we can get, and I'm gonna try to put it on the little black dot. Okay, I'm ready. That was pretty close, Again. very close. Without relying on angular momentum or, in other words, spin stabilization to stabilize the slug, the Diablo shape is stable even at Mach 1.5. This almost magical shape was invented in the late 1800s, believe it or not, and is still commonly used with air rifle pellets. Hit a little bit high and actually went a whole lot deeper than I thought. Yeah, I, I thought it would go like a half inch deep. It did not in any way come out the other side. No, no. However, can you see down in there how shiny that is? It's the exact opposite, or the exact... Uh... Yeah, it's the steel ball. That's cool. And then, oh, and let's see how deep it is. Let's see. That deep into the... It's about an inch deep. Yeah, it's uh, sure. about 12 millimeters. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, about... Uh... <laughs> and then on the ground back there, we found this. That's... This has got your, what do you call it, a Chinese ball? or The chinko ball. Oh, yes. You're going to get canceled for using language like that. Uh, your pachinko ball with the Gorilla Glue still stuck to it. it kind that's of like that's kind of it impresses to... me that it would still... Uh, we're not sponsored by Gorilla Glue. Are you sure? I'm very sure. I used it this morning as a dessert topping. <laughs> but being able to, to adhere to a, a smooth, hard surface like that and not... And still... After, after and going yeah. like 1,700 feet per second or whatever... And, and, and live through that kind of impact and still stay attached. And still attached. That's a testament to that glue. That's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, Jeff, you brought up just a second ago off camera that this is very similar, not unlike a 9 millimeter ball. Yes. Traveling at a little bit faster than 9 millimeter speeds. So what we're going to do is try a 9 millimeter round and see. We're, we're not expecting to find the 9 millimeter round, but we're going to try a 9 millimeter round and see what it does. People always like comparisons and... I, you know, I, I love comments like that because it's like, makes me think. It's like, you know what? I like comparisons too. Yeah. And I just happen to have a nine millimeter with me today. A new one. Okay. So let's, let's give it a try. All right. 130 Ooh. grains. The or ball. The, the whole. The whole package. The whole package is 130 grains. Okay. And 115 grains on the uh, nine millimeter. But a lot harder. Faster. And a lot faster, yeah. Faster. It's like 357 speed. It's about 1650, 1650, yeah. This is probably traveling about 1100, so. Yeah. So we're Just gonna... a comparison, though. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if we've ever shot the plate with handgun ammo. Little star. And don't worry, nobody 
will judge you. Oh, I, I don't imagine so. Except the way you're wearing your earplugs, but that's a different story. All right, on the star, hopefully, or somewhere near it. Now, in case you too were curious what a common caliber like 9mm would do to the lead plate, well, there you go. For me, it gave me a better appreciation for some of the slugs that have gone right through this plate. So the hole is about is similar in diameter, about but about half as deep. Okay. Not nearly as deep as that one was. So that that shows you right there that the speed and a little bit extra um, hardness. So hardness. Yes. Got in there, and then this bounced back out. This is our nine millimeter slug that uh, smashed into that hole nice and popped back out about ten feet land on the ground so um, you might want to look real quick just for science the hole has been appropriately fingered so it is a finger size hole why is it that we always buy shampoo and conditioner and at the end of the month we always end up with a cabinet full of conditioner and all the shampoo's gone <laughs> Jeff found this jug of infusia the infusium 23 that's about a 25 year old jug of hair conditioner your wife's gonna buy a two pack of shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> this shit's gonna be left over and the shampoo's gonna be gone when you need it. And next thing you know, late one drunken night, you're washing your hair with conditioner and you're like, what, is this, what does this even do? It's just weird slimy stuff. Yeah. So, I think the only, the, the uh, in honor of Women's History Month and St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> which, which is the same thing. Corned beef, baby. <laughs> I think we're gonna set this down range. We're gonna try one of these uh, single, uh, gorilla balls and fire it right at it and see uh, see what it does that one doesn't look like it's balanced very well look at look at the ball in there it's a little bit cattywampus sometimes a little after 40 your balls are cattywampus to the <laughs> <Okay. size. laughs> they don't sit flush in the cup if you know what i mean <laughs> okay hopefully we're far enough back no we're not <laughs> i can Shut tell up. right now i'm going to aim for the word vitamin okay. or or vitamin if you are uh, in the cabbage speaking country. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. We don't understand the concept of conditioner. In fact, if we didn't have shampoo, we'd wash our hair with Gojo Hand Cleaner. If it weren't for women, we do stupid things like that. Jeff's clearish ballistic gel was no good anymore. We decided to mold it into a clearish ballistic uh, gel. What Gum, do you call these things? Gummy bear. Pachinko gummy. ball. A what? Pachinko, pachinko ball. Pachinko ball. <laughs> yeah, he's got little pachinko balls right down there. <laughs> this is one of the clearest uh, gummy bears I've ever seen, Jeff. Yeah. They usually are awfully dark brown. I rushed that. I, it's got a few bubbles in it, but yeah. after, hey. After some jingle-like um, skills here, I was able to stack this on this plate. Yeah, it doesn't look like a good idea there, but... Yeah, most of what I do is not a good idea. <laughs> We're going to put one of these, uh, this, this final remaining single round, federal round, into his little pachingo belly and uh, see what he does. See if we can capture it or maybe does it zip on through? Oh, I think it'll zip through. You be the judge. You, be, you decide. Got him. Oh, it on the table. The Gorilla Glue structure is acting like a non-discarding Sabo. The purpose of a Sabo is to keep a small caliber projectile centered and running straight down the barrel to maintain its accuracy. Well, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> they're actually turning out to be pretty dang accurate. That's pretty cool. You can see, maybe you can see, a little bit of a ring around his little belly button there where I believe the slug hit, ejected its little pachinko ball. Because <laughs> I got it right, finally. I think that's what flew out the back here. You can kind of see a little wound track through there in the clear-ish ballistic gel. Yep. Clearly an exit hole there, but I don't believe that exit hole is big enough for the whole thing. We found this out front, a little uh, hot glue sphincter, and uh, <laughs> laying out front. So I think it hit on the front, shot the ball on through. This, yes. I think we need to hit this guy probably with the double. Double! Oh, the double! If one is good, two ought to be better. It's not working even after the candy's gone. That's 
definitely had a little bit more oomph to it. I bet. Um, I bet like twice as much. Going from zero to 1,650 feet per second in an instant, well, there's a lot of forces going on there. With 15 or 20,000 Gs of acceleration, well, those two slugs are slamming into each other and tearing themselves apart. All right, double trouble. Double, double gorilla balls. <laughs> I'm gonna try to put them right on the nose. Okay, maybe something will hit them. <laughs> here we go. Okay, I'm ready. With the single slug we had very good ballistic stability, the double slug was just a mess. But had we not shown you this, a lot of people in the comment section would have been suggesting why we didn't try two slugs at once. And this is exactly why. Okay, we're now at about 45 feet now. Yep, 45 feet. You want me to try for the orange one in the middle? Yes, and not hit the yellow or red one. Snipe it out of the middle of those other two? That's right. Snipe it. Just yeet it over there. All right, here we go on the orange jug. Okay. <laughs> and once again, our goal is to create stable flying supersonic projectiles, not just load garbage into a shell and shoot it. Because you'll almost always get garbage results. Moral to the story. Don't claim which target you're going to shoot at. <laughs> so I said I'm going to hit the orange one, and of course I destroyed both of them on both sides. This is a perfect round for if you have a hostage and two hostage takers, <laughs> and you want to fire one round because ammo costs are kind of high. You want to fire one round, you want it to spread and take out the two bad guys and leave your good guy. It worked out perfect. <laughs> Actually, I think the moral of the story that you were trying to get to is don't make stuff too complicated. Well, I'm going to aim at the one in the center again and try to hit the two green... Hit them right in the jugs on both sides. Though. Okay. Okay. Hey. I'll be I'll be happy if you hit anything. Me too. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. There you well, go. It kind of did that. Here we go. The forces of acceleration out of a shotgun are extremely strong, and even a lead slug will compress and distort just from this acceleration. So even our Gorilla Glue wasn't strong enough to prevent the slugs from destroying each other. It did a little better. I'm surprised. It, it did completely the opposite of what the last one did. <laughs> we thought we were going to hit both of the bad guys on both sides and instead blew up the guy in the center. I don't believe these two jugs are even ruptured. Yeah. It might have punk, put, got a hole in it from when it fell on the ground and hit a rock take or something. these home and drink them for St. Patrick's Day next that's, week. That's right. Or later this week. <laughs> but yeah. I... Uh, we have inside here another one of these little oh, okay. hot glue rings. A little skirt or something. Yeah, they make the little um, silicone rings like like uh, guys are like as fashionable these days. So it's one for your lady. <laughs> for my lady. Yeah, that's not fitting on me my fingers. <laughs> anyway, interesting test. It just goes to show don't get too complicated with stuff and uh, keep it simple. How about a lemon? Ballistic lemon represents a lung or something like that? A lung? I don't know. I don't know what kind of lungs you have, but... <laughs> okay, can he hit it? Here we go, when you're ready. I'm ready. Whoa! -ho. A slug back, back there, I did see that one hit. Yeah. By keeping things simple, we had a very effective and accurate projectile. At least accurate enough to hit a lemon-sized object at around 30 feet. If you guys are super bored, swing by OG's Danger Show. Give a... give a... Uh, some, yeah. You are selling merchandise now. Oh yeah, I've got merchandise. Hoodies like this. If you want to become uh, invisible to attractive women, get yourself some OG's Danger Show merch and uh, it'll work, trust me, it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got some different videos over there if you wanna go, go over there and give it a try. I'd appreciate you guys subbing over there. And uh, other than that, we will see you guys on the next Top Later Mouse video. Be safe out there. <laughs>